My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in one of my favorite places in the city of ancient Ephesus, and it is a location that is closed to the public. But the reason I like it is because it is such a remarkable archaeological site. It is the Temple of Serapis. It's located behind the State Agora, back behind the library. It's very hard to get here, but when you see this site, it is simply breathtaking. For example, this is a piece of the cornice that went along the top of the temple. These are the fallen columns, which were single pieces, which each weighed 80 tons. This was a massive, massive temple to the god Serapis. The religion of Serapis was dark, it was dreary, it was eerie, it was Egyptian, and it was filled with eerie music and all kinds of dark occult rituals. This was something nearly taboo and forbidden to the common man. We would say this temple was literally swarming with demon spirits and occult activity. All of that was happening right here in this place, which was formerly the temple of Serapis. Seducing spirits with doctrines of demons abounded inside this dark location. But the Apostle Paul talks to us about seducing spirits and doctrines of demons infiltrating the church at the end of the age. Even the church is going to be victimized by seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. The Bible emphatically teaches this in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, where Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly, clearly, unmistakably, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. When we look at a place like this, the Temple of Serapis, we wonder, how could the people of that time have embraced something so dark, so sinister? Mm. But the Holy Spirit says, at the very end of the church age, believers are going to begin embracing doctrines that are dark and are sinister, doctrines that will lead them off track away from the time tested truths of Scripture. That's going to happen at the end of the age. Now, there's also going to be a great revival at the end of the age. These things will occur in a parallel fashion. We need to make sure we stay a part of the move of God and we're not led off track by seducing spirits with doctrines of demons. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. My name is Rick Ratter, and I want to welcome you to today's program. And I want to tell you right up front that if you need prayer, we're here for you, and we would love to pray with you. Let us know how to pray, and our team will immediately begin to pray with you. And I'm offering you my book right now, which is called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. This is one book you need to read. It will impact you, and you may need to order several copies because I guarantee this is a book you're probably going to want to share with some other people, people that you're concerned about, that they may be veering from the truth. This book will help them think right and get back on track. But today I want to teach you about how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. And today we're going to return to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Now, if you look at the set, today I'm surrounded by Russian art. On one side of me is a piece of Russian art from the 17th century. On the other side of me is a brand new piece of Russian art. What do these have to do with what I'm going to teach you today? Well, I'm going to tell you in just a few moments. But first, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3, Paul is writing to Timothy. That's why this book is called the Epistle to Timothy. He's writing to Timothy. And in verse 3, he says, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. 
other doctrine in Greek is heterodidaskalos. The word didaskalos describes teaching, sophisticated teaching, well-packaged teaching, but in this particular case, it's connected to the word heteros, and the word heteros means something of a different kind or something of a different sort. Even though it was well-packaged teaching, even though it was very sophisticated, it was a teaching of a different kind. It did not really match what Paul and the other apostles and what Jesus had preached. It was a modification of the truth. People were modifying the truth to fit the culture. And that's, by the way, exactly what people are tempted to do today. Let's change the truth. Let's be a little more progressive in our thinking. Let's cause the truth to fit our times. The way we used to teach it, it's no longer relevant. You know, one day I was teaching in a church, and when I was finished, the pastor came to me, and he paid me a compliment, but it was a very strange compliment. He said, Rick, when I listen to you, I look at you and I think of you like a dinosaur. I said, a dinosaur? What does that mean? He said, you're like frozen in time. He said, I think by moving to Russia and being out of America, God somehow preserved you. You're like something frozen in time. You're teaching the Bible the way we used to teach it 20 years and 30 years ago. We've all moved on from verse by verse teaching of the Bible, but you're like a dinosaur. You're frozen in time. Well, I think that's great. I received it as a compliment. Because the Bible is most important above all else. We have to teach the Bible. People need the Bible. Our job is not to move away from the scripture or to preach something else. We're not to modify truth. We are to stick with the truth. And my friends, it doesn't matter what generation we live in or what decade it is or what is the progressive popular thinking of the day. Truth is always truth. And as spokesmen for God, our job is to speak for God. And our job is to speak the truth as God gave it. We're not to teach a gospel of another kind, not something of a different sort, but we are to stick with the original message. Now, look what Paul now says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He's describing those that have erred from the faith, and they're teaching a modification of it. And listen to what he says about them in verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. When Paul says desiring, in Greek, this is the word thelo. The word thelo means to wish, to will, to earnestly long for. But in this case, it describes a persistent desire. These people are really desiring to be profound. Teachers of the law, in Greek is the word nomo didaskalos. From nomos, which means laws or principles or standards, and the word didaskal, which means I teach. You compound the two words together. Here it's translated teachers of the law, but it's really those who want to be profound. They want to be scholarly. They want to be scripture lawyers. They want to handle scripture, principles, standards, norms of scripture. But Paul says they're unable to do it accurately because they don't understand what they're saying. And by the way, the word understand, which Paul uses in this verse, is from the Greek word nous, which describes the mind. But in this case, they're not thinking correctly. Their mind is defective. They're coming to illogical conclusions. Paul says they're not able to be what they want to be. It's good that they have desire. It's good that they want to be profound. They want to be scholarly, but they don't understand. There's something faulty in their thinking. And we saw in the last program that one of the problems is people really don't know the Bible. You need to know the Bible before you stand up to teach. If you've never had your ABCs, then you're not ready to do something scholarly. Sometimes people say, well, but you know, people have desire and people are so supernaturally gifted in their ability to speak. They're just masterful. That's good. That's all a part of the supernatural equipment that God gives us. But God also expects us to use our minds. He wants us to use our brains. Let me give you this illustration. If you know a child that wants to be a surgeon, and the child says, oh, I really want to operate on people. I really want to be a surgeon. Do you say, wow, that is amazing. Let me give you a scalpel. Go to work. Find somebody to operate on. Would you do that? Or would you say, you know what? That's a good desire, 
but first you need to go to school. You need to learn medically how to operate on people. You need to train under a surgeon who can show you what to do. Would you just give a scalpel to somebody because they have desire, or would you send them for education? Or let me ask you, would you want someone operating on you that had never been to school? I don't think so. In the same way, if somebody's going to preach, if somebody's going to teach, if somebody's going to handle the Word of God, they need some basic principles underneath them. They need education before they pull out their scalpel to begin spiritually operating on people's souls and on people's hearts in a spiritual sense. And Paul says in this verse, 1 Timothy 1 verse 7, he gives them the benefit of the doubt. He says they're making mistakes doctrinally, but it's because they've never been to school. They just don't understand there's something defective in their thinking, and because of that, they're reaching illogical spiritual conclusions. And you know what? They may have sincerely believed what they were teaching, but what they were teaching was not in agreement with the whole body of Scripture. We need to be very serious if we're going to stand in the pulpit or be on TV or use any format to teach the Word of God to somebody else. This is serious business. Now, that's what was happening in the first century. But when you come to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, the Holy Spirit prophesies what's going to happen at the end of the age. We've already covered this, but I want us to look at it again. And in this verse, the Holy Spirit says... Now, the Spirit speaks expressly. This word expressly is the Greek word ratus. It means emphatically, definitely. He's describing something that most assuredly will come to pass. Now, the Spirit speaks expressly in undeniable, unmistakable terms, in the strongest and clearest of language, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So now in this verse, the Holy Spirit points his finger 2,000 years into the future to the very end of the church age, and he begins to describe a strange phenomena that's going to occur inside the church as the church comes to the very end of the church age. And the Holy Spirit says in the latter times, when there's no more time, when you've come to the very end of the age, some shall depart from the faith. Those words, the faith, has a definite article in Greek, which tells us this is not faith for signs and wonders, or faith for finances, or faith for healing. This is the faith. Some shall depart from the faith, or the clear teaching of Scripture, time-tested truth of the Bible. And the Bible here says they will depart because they are giving heed to seducing spirits and to doctrines of demons. So there's going to be the activity of evil spirits in the last days to lure people off track. And in fact, the word seducing is the Greek word planeo. The word planeo was really the word used to describe an animal that lost its way and could never find its way back home. And in this verse, the Holy Spirit prophesies that at the end of the age, some are going to lose their way, they're going to morally wander, and in fact, society at large is going to be so lost morally, it's going to veer so far off track, it will seem like society has lost its ability to come back home, to come back to where it once was. That's what's going to happen in the world. The Bible says in this verse, it's going to happen to some in the church. Now, what does the word some mean? Well, in Greek, it describes a notable some, a noteworthy some. Really, it's describing leadership. There are some leaders who are going to begin to veer from the faith, from the solid teaching of Scripture. But here's the problem with this. Leaders have impact. And when leaders veer, they take people with them. So we need to be careful who we're listening to and pray for our leaders. We need to pray that they'll stay on track. But in this verse, the Apostle Paul writing, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, he says the Spirit speaks expressly, unmistakably. You cannot misunderstand what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit is speaking in the strongest and clearest of language at the very, very end of the age. Some notable people and people with them will begin to depart from the faith from the sound, clear teaching of Scripture, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons 
again seducing the Greek word planeo, spirits of delusion, spirits that cause people to wander from truth, to lose their mooring, to lose their path. And the Bible says they will do it with doctrines of demons. That word doctrines is a Greek word didaskalia. It describes something well conceived, well packaged, very sophisticated. These are new systems of thinking, progressive thinking, but it's very different from what the Bible teaches. It's a different path. But it will be presented by seducing spirits, very well packaged, very sophisticated, a new system of thought, a new way of thinking, and people at large in society, and even some in the church, will buy into the lie. That is exactly what the Apostle Paul wrote, what the Holy Spirit prophesied through him in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. But today, now we're going to go to 2 Timothy. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, the Apostle Paul repeats this, but he says it a little different. Listen to what he says. For the time will come. Notice he says will come. It's speaking futuristically to the end of the age. Again, it's prophesying what's going to occur in the very end of the age. That's our age. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Itching ears referred to people who said, you know what, I've already heard that. I've been established in that. I'm tired of hearing that. Tell us something new. They had itching ears to hear something different to hear a modification, to hear truth that had been amended, altered, or changed. And here we just see that in society, there's going to be a general moving away from everything established. My friend, aren't we seeing that today? That's exactly what we're seeing. People are veering from established truth. They're even veering from science to believe things that do not match reality. They're veering from truth, and they even have itching ears a strange desire to hear more and more and more and more of what really is nonsense. And they're buying into it and they're believing it. And the Bible tells us in verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that leads us to this art that I have brought to today's program. Let me tell you about this art. This is a Russian icon. It is 17th century. I brought it here today. I borrowed it to show you. And I want you to look that it's very damaged. It's very destroyed. That's because when the Bolshevik Revolution took place in 1917, these were thrown out of the church and they were destroyed by the thousands and thousands and thousands. This actually depicts Mark, the writer of the Gospel, Mark. This is a very beautiful piece of work. And during its time, this was a very lovely piece of art. These adorned the walls of churches, believers' homes, all over Russia before the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. These were fabulous artists who created these pieces of art that depicted biblical truth. Are you listening to me? It depicted biblical truth. But in 1917, Biblical truth fell out of fashion. It fell out of fashion because communists came to power and communists were atheists and they didn't believe in God. This was no longer fashionable. It fell out of fashion. So those who painted these beautiful pieces of art put it aside and now they use their same skills to paint fairy tales. And that's what this is. This is a modern piece of art created in Russia it's called black lacquered art, and this particular style is called palak. This is just magnificent. It is made of paper mache, 16 layers of paper mache. It is covered with the most magnificent illustrations of Russian fairy tales, and then it's covered with lacquer. It's just magnificent. Do you know who painted this? The same people who once painted Russian icons for the church. The same talent, the same gifts, but because this was no longer fashionable, they decided to now use their gifts and their talents to create something else. So those who once dealt in truth, that's what this is. This is a Russian icon from the church. Those who once dealt in truth begin to use their gifts to produce fairy tales. 
Isn't that amazing? And really, if you look at this, this is just exquisite. The artwork is just amazing. The talent is remarkable. But they were now dealing with fairy tale material. They literally fulfilled the scripture. They turned their ears from the truth and they were turned unto fairy tales. The Apostle Paul prophesies that at the end of the age, that is what people will begin to do with the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word, the way it was declared, will fall out of fashion. People would say, well, it's no longer relevant. Uh, there was a time when that was good, but that's no longer fashionable. Now we're beginning to think differently. Let's put that aside. Let's put that aside. And in some cases, they're throwing it out. Just like icons were thrown out of the Orthodox Church and thrown out of homes in 1917. And those who once dealt in truth are now beginning to create new fabrications, modifications that don't really represent the teaching of the Bible. They've turned their ears from truth. And just as the Apostle Paul says, they have been turned unto fables. Wow. A fable will never change your life. It'll never change your life. Truth will change your life. The devil hates the truth, and he wants the truth to be discarded. He wants the truth to be thrown away, to be eliminated, to be put on the shelf. And he wants us to come up with new creations that are beautiful, sophisticated, well-developed. But he doesn't even care because he knows that these new creations, these no mo new modifications, they don't really carry the power of the gospel that will transform a, peop a person's life. Now, friend, let me ask you, do you want the truth or do you want a fairy tale? You have to decide. The truth will change you. A fairy tale may entertain you, but it won't lead you to anything that is life transforming. And we have to make the decision. We are going to stick with the teaching of the Bible. We're going to stick with truth, even if it seems everyone around us has begun to teach fairy tale material. We're sticking with truth, not a modification of the truth. But yet the Holy Spirit prophesied this would happen at the very end of the church age, and that's the age we're living in. So you and I have to make a decision. Even if people think we're dinosaurs, we're gonna stick with the truth because the truth is what has the power to transform lives. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. The world is changing. In fact, it's more than changed. It's gone crazy. We are living in a world where faith is questioned and sin is welcome, where people seem to have lost their minds about what is right and wrong. It seems truth has been turned upside down. In Rick Renner's new book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, Rick reveals the disastrous consequences of a society in spiritual and moral collapse. In this book, you'll discover what Christians need to be doing to stay out of the chaos and anchor to truth. You'll learn how to stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit, discern right and wrong teaching, how to be grounded in prayer, and how to be spiritually prepared for living in victory in these last days. Leading ministers from around the world are calling this book essential for every believer. And today only, this book is available as our free gift to you. Just call the number on your screen or visit renner.org. Free, today only, when you call or go online to request it. You can also order the 15-part teaching series when you call or go online right now. Rick takes you deep into New Testament prophecies about the end of the age and what you need to do to sail successfully through turbulent end-time waters. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. Get the book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, for free today. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. responses that we've been receiving from the programs and Pastor Rick's teaching have been um, just wonderful to have come across. We've had people that have been a follower of Pastor Rick for quite a while. They're exciting for the new teachings that are coming out on the program. 
They enjoy the depth that he teaches at. They en uh, enjoy the Greek that he uses to, to further expound upon what the scriptures have to say. We also have many people who have never seen the program before, never heard of Pastor Rick before. They, they come across the program and it's meeting a need that they have in their lives. They're very excited when they call in. This is a teaching type that they've not heard before, but it's registering with them. and It's taking them deeper into the Bibles for themselves, which is one of the goals of the program, which is to have a revival of the Bible. I just had a call yesterday about this woman called and her dad encouraged her to call because she was going through such a hard time and he knew that the prayer team here would pray for her. And so I believe that we are going to see growth more than we can express. Our ministry is growing. We are just exploding with people reaching out to us for resources and for prayer. And today I'm asking you to please pray about becoming a part of the giving team to help us with our ministry expansion project. Today, we've been studying 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and I want to read them to you again. It says, for the time will come, notice it says, will come, the Holy Spirit's pointing to the very end of the church age, that's where you and I are living right now, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Here we find an age when people are going to say, we're tired of that, we've heard that, we don't want to hear doctrine. We don't want to hear the same old truth we've already heard. Tell us something that is more fitting for our times. And the Bible says people will begin to modify truth. They'll no longer tolerate sound doctrine, but after their own desires, after their own lusts, so they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And the Holy Spirit here is so clear. He says, they shall heap. The word heap describes piles and piles. It describes a strange season, the very end of the church age, when there will be piles and piles of teachers that are modifying truth in order to meet the popular demands of what people want to hear. But you know, as a gospel preacher, my job is not to provide what people want to hear. My job is to speak on behalf of the Lord and to speak what the Lord has to say. Truth is truth. We don't tell people what they want to hear. We tell people the word of the Lord. That is our task. And by the way, I want to say thank you for helping us do it. Thank you for being a partner. Thank you for being with us. And today, I want to remind you that I'm offering you my book, which is called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. Order your copy today. But I want to pray for you. Father, I pray right now for my precious friend, that he or she would have discernment to recognize truth and to not turn their ears from truth unto fairy tales. Help us to stick with a word that has the power to change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's power. I'll see you in the next program. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.